Welcome to a new vlog. In this video I'm going to show you how I built this project where an ESP32 based smart wristband allows me to read the status of my 3D printer. I did a separate video with a teardown where I show the hardware aspects of these smart bracelets. It's vlog 316 and I'll link that on screen so you can check it out. You might have experienced a scenario where you have the printer located in a room or in a garage, maybe on a different level. You let it run printing a bigger project and you mind your other business. Sometimes you might have multiple parts that need to be printed. Each might take several hours and you don't want the printer to stay idle between the prints for a long time. You want to know when it's finished so you can go in and start the next print. So I thought about how I could solve this problem and I came up with a project where I'm using the LilyGo T wristband which is basically an ESP32 development platform built into this uh, smart bracelet form factor. The bracelet connects via Wi-Fi to the local network where Octoprint runs and manages the 3D printer. This way I can get status info about the 3D printer uh, from the Octoprint API but before I continue with the project I'll mention the sponsor of this video which is Skillshare and if you're not familiar with them this is your opportunity to learn more and maybe try them out. Skillshare is an online learning platform which offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons to fit any schedule. For a long time I wanted to learn some Python and also I had OpenCV image or pattern recognition on my list of interesting stuff to check out at some point. Recently I've discovered this interesting class by Ryan Slim which touches on both subjects with some basic road lane lines recognition using Python and OpenCV. The best thing about Skillshare is that it's completely free to try. They're offering a free 2 month premium membership if you use the link in the description to sign up. You can check them out, I'm sure you'll like them, but if you don't you can just cancel after 2 months and it won't cost you anything. By default the LilyGo wristband comes loaded with some firmware but I'm not sure it has the over the air capability enabled so to start this project I had to open the wristband and flash an OTA capable firmware with the included serial to USB interface so from this point forward I can flash it over the air. I just use the basic Arduino ESP32 OTA library and there provided example as a starting base for my code. After doing that it was pretty simple to flash new firmware images because the board will now appear listed in the Arduino list and the uh, upload happens over the Wi-Fi network. This is not a full bootloader type thing, this OTA capability is something which is bundled in the main application firmware and so you need to be careful to include those sections of code with your project from now on just to maintain the OTA capability with every uh, image you compile. Next I had to install the TFT ESPI library which has a driver for the screen used on the wristband and I heavily inspired my code by taking a look at the default firmware of the wristband. It's available on GitHub and I'll put a link in the description below. I played around with the LCD, adjusted the boot image, fonts and colors just to customize the project and make it my own. For generating the image data I use this online converter where you upload an image and it generates the image data array in a format that's compatible with the TFT library. Once I had these things working right I started work on the interface with the Octoprint API. Luckily someone has already released a great library which does everything I needed. The only quirk is that the library hasn't been maintained lately and the JSON library which, is de which it depends on for communicating with the API has made some changes in recent versions which break compatibility with the unmaintained Octoprint library. However you can just select to install an older version of the JSON library in Arduino and then everything will be fine. After fiddling with the Octoprint library, filling in the API key and the server address, I was pulling in all the data I was interested in, so I created this simple GUI which shows things that are important to me like current and target temperatures for the heat bed and the hot end, the current status of the printer, the progress in percentage as well as elapsed and remaining time for the current print. The Octoprint API library is capable of pulling more data and you could for example build multiple screens that you can cycle through to get more info but for me I'm mostly interested to know if the temperatures are right and what is the progress of the current print. 
up on the first line I have the target temperatures, while the line below with the bigger font has the current temperatures. This line will turn red when the set temperature is higher than zero, signaling the heater is on. As you may know, the ESP32 is not particularly power efficient and the battery inside this wristband is quite small, so it's important to put the ESP32 into sleep to conserve energy. By pressing the touch button on the wristband, I can put the ESP32 into sleep and by touching it again, it will wake up the ESP32 and start updating the information once again. If you are interested in taking a look at my code, I will place a link in the description below to GitHub and you can grab it and change it or use it as a starting point for your own project. It's far from perfect, there are a lot of things that would need to be improved. For example, there is no security at this point, anyone can just upload code from the network the ESP32 connects to. But since I use it on my local private network, this is not such a big issue for me. There are also a bunch of things that could be improved in terms of functionality. It could have a better GUI with better fonts, maybe multiple screens that would show more data, maybe switch to a vertical layout. Uh, it could wake up using the onboard sensors when it detects wrist movement instead of turning it on from a, a switch like it, uh, it's doing uh, currently. And the API also provides methods for issuing commands to the printer, so you can also control various stuff through the API. I'm sure there are other good ideas for improvements which you will share in the comments below, but personally I don't want to turn this into a long-term very complicated project, it already does what I needed. I hope you found useful or at least interesting this small project, as usual I am interested in hearing your thoughts in the comments below, and if you'd like to support this channel you can do so on Patreon with as little as $1 per month, and you'll also get some benefits like early access to content and exclusive access to updates of the projects I'm working on. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time with a new video.